successful day uh, out on the water catching some good salmon. Uh, we need to uh, clean our catch. There's uh, quite a few different ways to uh, clean them. Uh, some people like to use an electric fillet knife. Uh, those work well. Um, some people use a standard fillet knife and uh, well for some people that's the uh, way to go. I prefer to use a curved knife. Uh, this one's in a, a nice plastic sheath that protects the edge. The biggest thing with cleaning these salmon is having a, an extremely sharp edge. Uh, you can shave with this knife. Uh, you try to keep it that way every time you clean with them. Wash your knife down, dry it off, and, and strike it to your hone just to keep that edge nice and true. If you don't do that after washing it and drying it, you will start to develop some little pits on the edge. So, just a little tip on knife care. Um, I'm going to take this salmon, I'm going to take this fin and these fins off. I'm going to take the head off and I'm going to show you how to fillet it out to leave virtually nothing on the carcass. So, this is how they do it in Alaska in the canneries. That's where I learned it from. And it works pretty darn well. So I'm going to just take that fin off like that. And this fin I'm going to come in underneath and behind. Go down, go just a little past. And then come up. Alright. There's a few different uh, thoughts on uh, belly meat. Um, the belly meat's where all the fats go. And according to Michigan, it, that's where all the bad stuff, your heavy metals and whatnot, are located. So, you know, uh, do it with it what you want. But the way I'm going to fillet this out is uh, a butterfly style, so it'll be connected. And, uh, you know, again, then you can do with whatever you want with it. So I'm going to take the head off here. If you, uh, if you take the guts out here and go ahead and remove the gills, um, this, this head makes a great soup stock. There's a lot of meat left up in here. Um, there's meat in the cheeks and right here in the belly. Uh, if you're making a gumbo or anything with a seafood base, it's amazing. So, all right, I'm gonna go ahead and take my knife with a rocking motion and I'm going to slow, slowly come along where the backbone should be. Occasionally you'll get on the wrong side well, if you do, then, then you fix it up. No big deal. So you're going to come along, again, using a little bit of a rocking, sliding motion. Let the knife do the work for you. Don't push. Don't force it. Cut across the base of the tail so you can kind of peel it off. Go right through the Y bones. You can see how much, how little meat I'm actually leaving on this carcass by doing it this way. And that's that's the wonder of this knife. Just kind of slide it around along the rib cage. Now, when you get to a certain point, this meat is soft enough and these bones are flexible enough. If you press your blade down and pull, it pulls right away from the membrane, which gets almost all the meat off. So that's the first side. Now we're going to just go ahead and do the exact same thing on the other side and you'll see how little meat is actually left on the bones. This technique does take some practice but uh, it definitely pays off in the long run. Now that is virtually no meat wasted. You can see all the bones, you can see the spine, and when you take a look at the fillet, you can actually see where the spine laid into the fillet. So all that meat right there that's normally missed with a standard fillet knife or when you run an electric knife through um, is still there. So on your smaller fish, that doesn't make a whole lot of difference, but when you've got a 20 pounder and you do that, 
you, you can lose you can lose almost a quarter pound of meat. So now once once this is done, you can choose what to do here. If you want to take the belly meat out, you can see where the where the belly uh, membrane is here, and you just slice along these two edges right here, and that leaves you with those nice slab fillets. Uh, when I smoke the fish, I really like to smoke it like this and then cut this out later because this helps create a lot of moisture in the smoker and keeps this meat from drying out. We just went over uh, filleting out one of these uh, salmon after, our, uh, after getting home from our catch and uh, we're going to go ahead and stake this one out. Um, I'm staking this one out for smoking. Um, typically, steaks for throwing on the grill, um, you're going to want a much larger fish uh, because you want steaks like that. So you're looking at anywhere from a 10 to 20 pounder to do that. These are uh, nice jacks. They're uh, two and three year old fish and uh, they're a little small for staking for the grill but again they're wonderful in the smoker. We're going to start out real similar to what we did for the fillets. Um, we're going to go ahead and take this fin off first and then we're going to go ahead and take the forward fins off. Cut down go back a little ways and then just come right back up. That limits your waist, gets the bones out of the way, and makes it a lot easier in the long run. Now, at the anal port on the fish, right here, from that point back there's no Y bone. So instead of staking that portion, what I like to do is I like to go ahead and come in and fillet that section. That gives you a really nice boneless piece of meat that, uh, well, you can cook up in a, in a flash. It's also a little thinner, so throw it on the grill. It takes minute, minute and a half tops to cook that out, so it's a great little midnight snack. So I'm going to go ahead and finish going through. We'll get back to that in a minute. Um, I like to try to keep my steaks nice and even, and I'm not going to worry about this section of meat up here above the head. Uh, that section of meat is really good, like I said before, for soup stocks and whatnot by using the head. Just make sure you do take the gills out and take care of the guts. So we're going to start here at the back. You know, first I better take my dorsal off. That thing just gets in the way. Alright, so we're going to go ahead and stake this out. I generally go an inch to an inch and a half thick. Alright, now the next next part on this, cleaning the guts out are really easy. They just fall right out. It's kind of like dealing with smelt. Uh, but there's a, uh, there's a bloodline in here in the back uh, between the spine and the membrane inside. So you're going to take your knife and you're just going to lightly follow the ribs up and score it on both sides. And then when you go to rinse, rinse it out under the water, you just take your thumbnail and you push it out. And that pulls that membrane away, number one, and number two, it pulls that bloodline out real nice. So then when you rinse it, you just kind of clean it out, and then you have this absolutely beautiful piece of meat. Um, on a larger salmon, you're, you're looking at a much larger piece, but it's got that same shape and style. Um, if you're worried about the belly meat, you can go ahead and you can just snip that off and then have a winged steak, but uh, if you're not worried about it like me, then you just go ahead and prepare it like that, soak it in a brine or whatever, and uh, have yourself some wonderfully smoked fish.